Five years ago, I needed to build a different forge. It needed to be big, it needed to be hot, and I wanted it quieter. On top of all that, I thought, man, I'm gonna build a big forge, and how much propane will that take to heat that thing? I mean, fuel economy is a big thing on the highway, and it's a medium-sized thing in the blacksmith shop. So the more research I did, and the more people I talked to, especially my friend Ron Wales, now deceased, to whom I owe a great debt of gratitude for helping me begin to understand the solution to my problem, I began to really arrive at the same conclusion over and over again. If I was going to build a big forge, if I didn't want to have to buy a 20-gallon bottle of propane every single day, I needed to use <coughs> ribbon burners. This is a ribbon burner. The fuel-air mixture goes in here. It mixes in this chamber and it discharges through this refractory through all those little 5 16 inch diameter holes. Here's the advantage to a ribbon burner. The fuel and air is completely mixed. It's not just mixed going through a short tube into a pipe, coming out of a pipe orifice of whatever size you use, half inch or three quarter or one inch, and then sort of sticking the flame to the edge of the iron pipe and blowing that turbulent fire this big around, you know, into your forge and burning at least part of the fuel. Every bit of the fuel is in, well, virtually, every molecule of propane is in contact with enough molecules of oxygen, atoms of oxygen, molecules of oxygen, to get virtually complete combustion. Here's what that means. It gets hot, and it doesn't burn a lot of fuel. I light my forge at about seven pounds pressure. Once it's up to full heat, once the inside is smoking hot, sort of a high orange, turn the pressure down to two pounds. I can nudge it down to a pound and a half. Whispers along at a nice, even, I'll call it 1400 degree forging temperature. If I need it hot, if I'm putting a big piece in there and I need to put a lot of heat in there in a short period of time, or if I'm doing some Damascus and need to forge weld inside there, I crank it back up to about seven pounds and it smokes. And you think, cool, doesn't burn much fuel. Gets hot. Here's the other thing, it's quiet. It's not roaring, you're not creating turbulence through a venturi, you're not, you don't have one big flame bellowing out of the end of a pipe, it's quiet. You've got all these little tongues of flame disappearing into your hot forge and it just kind of whispers along. I can have conversations standing right next to this thing in a normal speaking voice and hear every word that everybody says. So it's hot, it doesn't burn much fuel, it's quiet. Here's the downside, they're expensive and they're hard to make. So when I had finally decided a ribbon burner was the way to go and I got in contact with Ron and he began to sort of explain what he provided and what it would cost and how it would be installed and he didn't quite understand what I was telling him about a monolithic pour in my big forge, but that's all right, I understood that. But he had a lot of great information for me about ribbon burners and it just became crystal clear that, that it was the only way for me to go in that forge. two pounds right there. There's seven pounds. These things like back pressure. See that? Put a little back pressure on there. It kind of holds the cone back up against the burner. So in your forge environment, close it up a little bit when you're lighting it. So that, that thing was just burning for, you know, five minutes, eight minutes. And that'll almost blister you right there, but the side of the block's not hot and the steel's not hot at all. Now, It'll get hot in your forge when you get up to temperature, but it doesn't get as hot as the end of a pipe does or the walls of the forge do because of the coolant that's being pushed through there all the time. Anyway, I hope that shows you well enough that this thing works, but understand this. When you're building a forge, I mean, you can get some information about how many cubic inches the burner ought to heat. 
but it's a hip shot. I mean, I'm a hip shot forge builder. I don't know how to run the calculations. I don't know how many BTUs are in a cubic foot of propane. Now I could look that up, but I don't know that I would be able to run the math that would tell me how many BTUs are gonna be coming out of this thing and what the R value is on the walls of my forge, and I don't care, okay? I don't care. I built a forge and it works, and you're gonna build a forge and it's gonna work, but just understand that there's an element of variability in this. This has got enough holes to be able to deal with a lot of propane and a lot of air. You reduce the propane, you reduce the air, you're not gonna use all the holes. There's some variability in this. It's not like, it's not a cookie cutter model. Your forge will be your forge and this burner will make it hot. If you think it'll work for you, if you're interested in sort of switching over and trying a different approach to heating up a forge for your blacksmithing, drop me a line. Get on the website, check it out, we'll hook you up.